All right, so in terms of uh, the first charge, part one, whether uh, Papadopoulos had met the professor Mifsud before he joined the campaign, well, when did he meet this Mifsud guy? Well, we know from Papadopoulos himself, he met him on the 14th of March, 2016 in Rome. There's no other evidence, there's no evidence of any other meetings, prior meetings and so on. So that, that seems to be the date. When did he join the campaign? Well, uh, there's really three dates we, we can look at here uh, as we as we really briefly outlined. So 9th of March, 21st of March, 31st of March. Uh, 9th of March was just a heads up. That was the informal, I think it was a guy called Sam Clovis who told him, look, um, you're going to be on the campaign. But that's an informal thing, you know, how often have you been told that you got some gig or whatever, but you're not sure yet because it hasn't been formalized, finalized. So I'd say, you know, 21st of March is probably a better date because that's when the actual announcement was made that this guy Papadopoulos was going to join the campaign. So and then there's also the 31st of March, which is where he actually physically joined. So remember, he was living in London. He was working for this, this think tank. And then he actually physically flew to Washington and met those people on the 31st of March. So we have to compare the 14th of March to whenever it is he joined. And I'd say he definitely joined the campaign so by the 31st because he was physically there. You could say he probably joined the campaign on the 21st because that's when the announcement was made. But uh, even if it's the 21st, the 14th of March precedes the 21st. So um, in my view, did Papadopoulos meet Mifsud before he joined the campaign? Yes, he did, because the 14th of March is before the 21st of March. So they met before the campaign involvement was announced and also before he actually joined, before he flew out and met the people. So uh, in my view, Papadopoulos is not guilty of the first part of charge one. Uh, what about the second part? Remember, the second part is uh, when did Papadopoulos learn about this this, this Clinton dirt or, or Russia having this, this dirt on Clinton? Well, Papadopoulos told the FBI that Mifsud, the professor, told him about the dirt before he joined the campaign. So similar question to what we just looked at. So we just go back before, uh, so some perhaps sort of before the 21st of March, if, if we call that the date, 31st of March, somewhere there, but definitely before that. That's what did Papadopoulos say. So this is from the... Um, the statement of offense, it says, uh, this isn't like the professor the Mifsud messaging me while I'm in April with Trump. Mm. So he's kind of saying it's before April. Um, I wasn't even on the Trump team. That wasn't even on the radar. I wasn't even in Trump's orbit at the time. This was a year ago. This was before I even got with Trump. Uh, and then he says it's a very strange coincidence that he would be told about this Clinton stuff before he started working for the campaign. When did he start it? When do you start working for the campaign? If we go back to our timeline here, you know, I guess, you know, when you have a meeting, even though it was just a meet and greet here, 31st of March, probably you could say that's the date. So let's say that's the trigger date, okay? So did he find out about this dirt stuff before the 31st of March? In that case, he wouldn't have been lying, or did he find out um, after the 31st of March? So what's the answer here? Well, um, when did he actually learn about the dirt? Well, in the statement of offense, it says that Papadopoulos found out about the dirt in late April. So Mifsud allegedly told him in late April 2016. Now, obviously, late April is whether we use the, the 21st or the 31st of March, you know, whichever date we use, this is definitely after. So I'd say it's pretty clear that Papadopoulos learned about the dirt after he joined the campaign and there wasn't some big coincidence. So whatever compelled Mifsud to tell Papadopoulos about dirt, and obviously um, Papadopoulos himself says that this was just sort of gossip, this was just stuff that was in the, in the news and they kind of gossiped about it, but whatever the reason why they talked about that probably had to do with the fact that Papadopoulos was already on the campaign, because again, we're talking late April here. So in my view, Papadopoulos is guilty of this particular charge. All right, what about the next one? The next one was that uh, the contacts, so his, his contacts with this Mifsud guy, that they were inconsequential. So again, this text up here is taken straight out of the statement of offense. This, this is, these are the government's words. Now, what did he say about his contacts with Mifsud? So this is what he actually said. He said that uh, the professors are nothing, the professor's just a guy talking up connections or something, and uh, the professor's just BSing, to com be completely honest with you. All right, so that's what Papadopoulos said at his interview in January 2017. Now again, we're asking, 
are these statements true or not true? Because the FBI is saying that he lied about this, that the professor was something, that he was not just BSing, that he was like some big wig or, you know, that he was of some consequence. So that's what the FBI is saying. Papadopoulos, as you can see here, is saying, no, 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 he was just a nothing. So which one is it? Well, I guess it really depends on how you interpret the question when, when the FBI asked Papadopoulos, you know, was, what was the, uh, the import of your meetings with the professor? You know, was it important? Was it not important? Was it consequential? Was it inconsequential? So if you had asked Papadopoulos at the time when he met the professor, then obviously I'd say, you know, he probably thought the professor is pretty important. This guy can set him up with connections, can do great things for him. So the, the, his state of mind, Papadopoulos' state of mind at the time that he was with Mifsud, this, that's subjective because that's, that's influenced by emotions, that's sort of in the heat of the moment. I guess, yeah, he would have thought that's, that's pretty consequential, that's pretty important. But remember, the FBI asked him in January 2017, this is almost a year after all this happened. So obviously, with that sort of distance between the event and uh, the FBI asking him, that's a more objective view. So what's his objective view? Well, his objective view at the time was, well, this guy was just BSing. And, you know, it's pretty likely that between when he first met uh, Mifsud and sort of 10 months later he would have realized hey that guy was just full of BS so in that sense if he says the guy's full of BS that's true so whether or not he lied to the FBI depends on whether you um, whether he was asked his about his subjective views back in 2016 or about his objective views at the time of the interview so uh, the answer in my view here is that uh, I don't see any evidence that the FBI said what did you think at the time back in uh, 2016. So if you're asked, what do you think of the professor, you're probably going to answer, like, what do you think right now? And right now, you know, back in, that would have been January 2017, he thought the guy was a BSer. And so his answer was, was truthful. And mind you, um, the intended goal of his interactions with Mifsud, Papadopoulos Mifsud, is they wanted to set up these great meetings for the campaign and, you know, do these wonderful things. Nothing ever came of it. There were no meetings. There's no, nothing ever happened. So, you know, it was pretty inconsequential. So I'd say definitely not guilty of, of the second charge. So what about the third charge then? Well, the third charge comprises again two parts. This is similar to the first one. So this is about this this meeting, this, this uh, Russian lady who turned out just to be a student um, in London, but somehow was introduced to Papadopoulos as Putin's niece and, you know, that was somehow important. Um, so the two parts are that he lied about when he met her, and the second part is that he lied about the, uh, whether the uh, uh, contact with her was consequential or inconsequential. All right, so how do we break this down again? First part, when did he meet her? 24th of March. When did he join the campaign? We have these three dates again. Now, it's not as clear as when he met Mifsud, because remember, he met Mifsud on the 14th of March, so definitely before joining the campaign, before it's even announced. Here, it's three days after the announcement. So if he says, I met her before I joined the campaign, well, we also had the 31st of March when he physically joined. So if it's the 31st of March, then it's definitely true. He met her before he joined the campaign. If by joining the campaign, you just literally mean the announcement of someone joining the campaign, well, then it's three days after. So, you know, it's not as clear as with uh, Mifsud, but I'd still say on the whole, did he lie about that? Did he lie about when he met her? Probably not. Look, he lived and worked in London at the time. And he hadn't met anyone on the campaign until the week after he met her. So he uh, met her again on the 24th. He flew out to D.C. on the 31st. So, um, you know, this is pretty, pretty fluid. The timeline here is fluid. You know, a few days here, a few days there. Do you take the announcement as the trigger date? Do you, do, do, do you take the actual physically meeting these people, meeting the campaign as the trigger time? You know, this is all pretty fluid. And remember what we said earlier, 18 U.S.C. 1001A, you need intent. You need the intention to lie. And I, I think the timeline is so fluid that it would be difficult to prove intent. So I'd say not guilty of uh, this charge, part one of the third charge. What about part two? So was his contact, was Papadopoulos' contact with this lady, the female Russian, was it inconsequential? I think this, the answer is pretty much analogous to what we said earlier about Mifsud. So if you had asked him at the time, if you'd asked Papadopoulos back in March 2016, April 2016, you know, is this important? Well, he'd just been told this is uh, Putin's niece and so on. So he would have probably thought, yeah, this is pretty important. This is pretty consequential. So again, 
subjectively at the time, yes, he would have thought it's important. But remember, the FBI interviewed him in January of 2017. By that time, he figured out that she was just a student, no niece of Putin's, nothing of any kind. Plus, whatever they were supposed to have sort of organized together, some meeting, some, I think it was sort of just, uh, you know, uh, the campaigns, uh, campaign getting together with uh, representatives from Russia. Uh, none of that ever happened. None, none of that ever came to fruition. So, um, in the end, when Papadopoulos in January of 2017 says, look, this was totally inconsequential, again, you know, she was a nobody or whatever the exact words that, that he used were, but, you know, he's, he's, he's right, you know, he's correct. So I'd say he's probably not guilty of uh, charge three, part two. So what, where do we end up then? Well, we end up with, there's basically, even though it was three charges spelled out in the statement of offense, it's actually five instances because we went through five different uh, separate lies. But, um, out of those, he only demonstrably lied once. Okay, so out of the, the five, only once did he actually lie. And the, the time he lied was about a date. Remember, he said, I, Mifsa told me about this dirt before I joined Trump. So that's about a date. So if, if he had just shifted it forward a month and not backward a month, then, you know, he'd have been, or if he just told the truth, obviously he'd been fine. But if he just sort of... Um, not done that, he'd have been fine. It would have, if he'd just given the correct date, he would have been absolutely fine. There would have been no charges at all. So it really sort of comes down to that. Now, why did he plead to all five, you might ask, you know, uh, if four of them are not really provable? Well, um, you know, this happens a lot when you have these, these plea deals because uh, in the end, it probably, you know, it doesn't matter to him because as we'll see, if you see down here, um, on the actual uh, sh charge sheet, it says one count of making a false statement, one. So, you know, at that point, Papadopoulos, he, would just, he just wants his deal. He just wants his plea deal. He doesn't care if, uh, you know, he's, if he has to sign the paper that he lied on, you know, about four things or five things or whatever. He doesn't care. He just wants the deal. So, um, you know, that's my best guess as to why he said that, uh, you know, he, he agreed that he had lied about these, whether something was inconsequential or not. And, you know, clearly he, he didn't lie about that. But, you know, the, the, the bottom line is there would have been no case he wouldn't have been charged but for the date that's the hard evidence that was you know you, we, we saw you could prove that you know he said this happened before I joined and it definitely happened after he joined so um, finally we should also say that this whole thing is a process crime it's not the underlying crime remember the underlying crime was there was an investigation into Russian collusion did this guy collude with any Russians? Yeah, clearly he didn't. He never, never met anyone from the Russian government. He was introduced to some some student in London. This is just like, you know, this is totally petty, tiny little stuff. So there's, there's nothing in there in terms of the underlying crime. But the part that isn't so petty is that he, he lied to the FBI, 18 U.S.C. 1001A. That's a process crime. Okay, so he lied. And, you know, so he got his uh, sentencing last week, 14 days, and, you know... Obviously, that's tough, but he did lie, and that, that's, that's how it sort of ended up for him, unfortunately. So, you know, finally, there's this one thing for me that, that kind of just bothers me still, because I keep asking myself, how did the FBI know that Papadopoulos lied? He met Mifsud before he joined the campaign and after the campaign. How did the FBI know when it was that Mifsud told Papadopoulos about this dirt story? How did they know? What are the options? Well, maybe they found it in an email. Maybe there's a paper trail. I don't think so, because... They checked all his emails. There's, there's nothing to suggest that they found anything there. Did Papadopoulos just volunteer the information? Option two, did he just tell them? That's possible, but that would have had to have been after his arrest. And if he volunteered information, what did they arrest him for? Okay, maybe they arrested him for something else, but I think that's also unlikely. I think the most likely answer is that someone else told the FBI about the date, 26th of April. Who was that someone else? I think it's probably Alexander Downer. We already talked about the, the Australian ambassador in London. Now, um, Adam Schiff, the congressman, has this memo, which is about a, a related issue, these, these FISA applications. Um, part of it is redacted, but the memo basically talking about this October 2016 FISA application specifically mentions the late April date. Okay, So perhaps the FBI knew Back in October, this is before they ever interviewed Papadopoulos, before Papadopoulos ever lied, before anything like that ever happened, that they knew about this late April date. How did they know? Well, what's the redacted part? So this guy, Stephen McIntyre and I, we've looked at this and we think it's probably says a senior diplomat in London, which would be Alexander Downer. He might have told him. 
Lastly then, how does Downer remember such a tiny detail? That, that, that's a question that still lingers. You know, for all anyone new, uh, Papadopoulos might have heard, you know, before, after, why the 26th of April? Papadopoulos himself says uh, he might have been recorded. I don't know. Hopefully we'll find out. Thanks very much for listening.